Major League Baseball's postseason has gone on for over 100 years, so it feels like it might be a little bit too big of a scope to cover. Well, at least for today's video. Because today, I'm gonna instead talk about the last 10 years of the postseason and tell you the 10 best players that played in Major League Baseball's postseason. We're gonna include pitchers, we're gonna include hitters, and keep in mind, these are not gonna be the best performances, so I'm not looking for just one postseason. I'm looking for multiple postseason series. I'm looking for a total combination of all their stats to equate to being to a good player. Now, typically, guys who have good series tend to be good postseason players, but there might be some that are left off on this list. So if you want to see a part two to this video where I talk about maybe the best postseason performances, make sure you leave a like on this video so that I know you want to see it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you love baseball. You know we're always covering that on this channel. Get in that comment section down below. Let me know some of the players that were snubbed off my list. And remember, I'm going to be live streaming every day of the postseason, live reacting to one of the games on twitch.tv slash draftneckmark. So if you want to watch along with me in the chat, make sure to follow me on there. Link's in the description. So to start off today's video, we're going to talk about a player that's close to my heart, Daniel Murphy, who of course had a great postseason with the New York Mets, but has also performed with the Nationals. Murphy made his first postseason appearance in 2015 with the New York Mets, and he went off that postseason. Three home runs in the NLDS with an OPS above 1,100. In the NLCS, four home runs with an OPS above 1,800, and a little bit of a cool World Series. He continued his postseason success in 2016 with the Nationals, hitting 438 with an OPS at 983 and continue to play in the postseason in 2017 for the Nationals. Despite having a cold 2018 postseason, Daniel Murphy still has great postseason stats in just four years. He's played in 25 games, hitting eight home runs, three doubles, a total of 30 hits and scoring 21 runs. He has 19 RBIs with three stolen bases, a 309 batting average, 398 on base, 588 slugging and a 986 OPS. For only playing in 25 games, those are some of the best stats that a hitter has in the postseason, especially in the last 10 years. For our next pick for the best players in the postseason of the last 10 years, we got to go to George Springer, who also made his postseason appearance in 2015. Didn't have a great postseason then, he was only 25 years old, but in 2017 and 2018, he really stepped up his game. In those two years, he only had one series with an OPS below 1,000. With the Astros in their 2017 World Series run, he went off in the ALDS and World Series, hitting five homers, three doubles, and driving in seven runs in the World Series against the Dodgers, won the World Series MVP, finished with an OPS above 1,400, and a slugging percentage at 1,000. He continued on his hot postseason streak in 2018, dominating the Cleveland Indians. Indians pitching with six hits, three home runs, three RBIs, a 429 batting average, and an OPS at 1500. In the ALCS against Boston, despite the Astros losing, he continued to stay hot. Eight hits, three doubles, one home run, five RBIs, and an OPS again above 1000. And in total in his postseason career, he's played in 36 games, 42 hits, 10 doubles, 11 homers, 20 RBIs, 286 batting average with a 364 on base, 578 slugging, and a 942 OPS. Springer just knows how to step it up in the playoffs. Our third player on today's list is actually going to be our first pitcher and is the late great Roy Halladay. Now, unlike some of the other pitchers that are going to appear on this list, Halladay only had five appearances in the postseason, but boy, did he make those count. In his first ever postseason game, pitching for the Philadelphia Phillies, he threw a complete game no-hitter against the Cincinnati Reds in just 104 pitches, striking out eight batters and only walking one. For the rest of that postseason, he was still an effective pitcher, not lights out like he was with the no-hitter, but in 13 innings, he gave up a total of six earned runs, striking out 12 batters, walking only two. And then in 2011, he continued to be a dominant postseason pitcher. Pitcher. Pitched twice against the Cardinals in the NLDS in 2011, pitching 16 innings, striking out 15 batters, allowing four runs, nine hits, walking two batters, and only giving up one home run. Roy Halladay's postseason experience may be short, but he threw a no-hitter in the postseason. I don't know how I leave this guy off the list, especially when you look at his numbers as a whole. 3-2 and two record with a 2-3-7 ERA in 38 innings pitched, with a whip at .737. That's nasty. For the fourth player in today's video, we head out to San Francisco to talk about the Kung Fu Panda Pablo Sandoval. I know for some of you, it might be hard to believe that this guy was ever good, but during that Giants dynasty run, he was on fire. In 2010, Sandoval's postseason career got off to a cold start, really didn't hit much in the playoffs, but 2012 is really where he started to pick it up. In the NLDS against the Cincinnati Reds, he had a homer and two doubles with an 890 OPS. Followed that up in the NLCS, hitting two homers with two doubles, six RBIs, a 941 OPS. And then, of course, in the 2012 World Series, where he was the World Series MVP, he absolutely went off. He was eight for 16 that series with a double and three homers with four RBIs, hitting 500 with a 529 on base, 1100 slugging percentage, and a 1654 OPS. 2014, while he didn't hit home runs, he was hitting plenty of doubles and getting on base at a very high percentage. In the 2014 postseason, he racked up a total of 26 hits, 
in 71 at bats and was reaching base at almost a 500 percentage. For his career stats in the postseason through 39 games, Pablo Sandoval has 53 hits, 13 doubles, 6 home runs, and 20 RBIs. He's hitting 344 with a 389 on base, 545 slugging, and a 935 OPS. And yeah, he's a three time World Series champion and a World Series MVP. At the number six spot in today's video, we're going to go with John Lester, who played for a multitude of teams in the playoffs in the 2010s Red Sox, A's, Cubs. Now, his run with the A's wasn't great, but in 2013 with the Boston Red Sox, he was absolutely dominant. In 2013 postseason, Lester only allowed six runs in 34 and two thirds innings, striking out 29 batters and walking only eight. 2015 with the Chicago Cubs, he wasn't his dominant self, but still pitched a pretty decent success. And then 2016, 17, 18 is where Lester really stepped it up for the Cubs. On their run to the World Series in 2016, Lester was dominant in the NLDS against the San Francisco Giants, pitching eight innings, allowing no earned runs, striking out five. He won the NLCS MVP against the Los Angeles Dodgers in the next series, a 1.38 ERA in 13 innings pitched. And then in the World Series against Cleveland, he was still very good. 14 and two thirds innings, six earned runs allowed, an ERA at 3.68 and a whip at 1.159. In the last 10 years, John Lester's postseason ERA is 2.57 with a whip under one at 0.991. At the number six spot in today's video, we have probably one of the more underrated postseason hitters in the last 10 years. That's gonna be Justin Turner, who's been really good. He's obviously made the playoffs every single season with the Los Angeles Dodgers since 2014, including being the NLCS MVP in 2017 for the Dodgers against the Chicago Cubs, where he went six for 18 with two homers and seven RBIs, 333 batting average, OPS above 1100. And while his performances may have never been standout by themselves, in total for his postseason, he's had a really good career. In six years, 53 games played, Justin Turner has 62 hits, 25 runs scored, 13 doubles, one triple, and nine home runs to give him 35 RBIs. He's also stole five bases. He's hitting 315 with a 411 on base, 528 slugging, and an OPS at 939. Justin Turner is extremely clutch. He knows how to get on base. He drives in runs. He's been a really good postseason player throughout his career. Another hitter that's been absolutely dominant in the postseason, probably more dominant than you even know, we gotta talk about Nelson Cruz. Oh my goodness, what a postseason career he's had. He started off hot in the postseason in 2010, hitting six home runs along with seven doubles in the postseason, and he continued that hot streak where in 2011, he won the ALCS MVP, hitting six homers and two doubles, driving in 13 runs, and having a 1700 OPS in the ALCS. Since then, he's continued to be an extremely hot hitter in the playoffs, and he hit well for the Twins this postseason despite getting swept by the Yankees. In 44 games in the postseason, Nelson Cruz has 47 hits, 33 runs scored, 10 doubles, 17 home runs, and 35 RBIs. He's hitting 287 with a 354 on base, 659 slugging, and an OPS at 1.012. Cruz is currently tied for seventh all time in home runs in postseason history in only 181 plate appearances, which is by far the least amount of plate appearances in the top 10. For our eighth player in today's video, we're heading back out to San Francisco to talk about one of the players that's part of that dynasty. It's not Mad Bum yet. This guy gets forgotten a lot. It's Tim Lincecum, who was great in the postseason for the Giants. We know how good Lincecum was. He had a very short window, but in that period of time, he was dominant. We all remember that 2010 complete game shutout two hitter against the Atlanta Braves, where he struck out 14 batters in a dominant performance. He continued to be an effective pitcher throughout the 2010 postseason for the Giants, helped them win the World Series. Wasn't as dominant in 2012, but still a very solid pitcher for the Giants, again, helping them win the World Series. And then 2014, he only made one appearance, but he made that appearance count and was lights out for the Giants in his one and two thirds innings. In total for his postseason career, Tim Lincecum was five and two in 13 games, six starts with a 2.4 ERA and a whip under one at .852. He pitched a total of 56 and one third innings, striking out 65 batters while only walking 14 and giving up 34 hits. The freak was, well, he was a freak in the playoffs. It's just he was overshadowed by guys like Madison Bumgarner, who's coming up very soon. Our penultimate player in this video is probably not only one of the most clutch players in postseason history, but he's also one of the best hitters of the last 10 years in the playoffs. That's obviously going to be David Freeze. You were probably wondering when's he going to be on this list? Well, he's here now. Freeze bursts onto the postseason scene, winning the MVP of the NLCS and World Series in 2011, and he's been pretty good since then. In 2011, NLDS, not a bad start, 833 OPS, a home run and two doubles, but then he went off in the NLCS, hitting three homers, three doubles, driving in nine RBIs, and having OPS almost at 1,700. In the 2011 World Series against the Rangers, we know the heroics he played in that series. Huge home run, huge double, huge triple, seven RBIs, OPS above 1,100. But then he made the move to the Los Angeles Dodgers in 2018, and he found his postseason magic again. For his postseason career in 68 games, David Freeze has 61 hits, scoring 26 runs, 17 doubles, two triples, 10 homers, 36 RBIs. He's hitting 300 with a 371 on base, 552 slugging, and a 923 OPS. He hits home runs in the playoffs. He's clutch. He comes up when you need it. David Freeze is definitely one of the best postseason players in the last 10 years, which leads us to our final player who is clearly the best player of the postseason in the last 10 years. That's Mad Bum, Madison Bumgarner. There was just absolutely no way I could leave this guy off this list, and he deserves to be the last one that's talked about because he is the best. We saved the best for last. As you already know, Bumgarner 
is filthy to begin with, but then you throw him into the postseason and he goes on a different level. Now, crazy enough, he actually had a hiccup in the 2012 postseason to start off in the NLDS and NLCS. 2010, he gave up five earned runs in 20 and two thirds innings, striking out 18 batters, only walking five. In the 2012 World Series, he actually pitched great. That's where he really stepped it up. He threw seven innings of two hit baseball, striking out eight, allowing no runs. 2014 is where he really went off and you went, okay, this guy's unbelievable. Complete game four hit shutout in the wild card game, striking out 10 against the Pirates. He then followed it up in the NLDS, pitching seven strong innings, allowing two runs. In the NLCS against the Cardinals, he won the MVP, pitching 15 and two thirds innings, only allowing three runs, striking out 12 and walking three. And then of course we know about the 2014 World Series where he was the World Series MVP, pitching in 21 innings that World Series, allowing only nine hits, one earned run, one home run, one walk, and striking out 17. And then in 2016, he knocked out my Mets in the wild card game, pitching a complete game shutout, allowing four hits, striking out six batters. In 16 games, 14 starts, he has an eight and three record with a 2.11 ERA, three complete game shutouts, one save, 102 and one third innings pitched, 87 strikeouts to 18 walks. He's only allowed 24 runs and 74 hits, and he has a whip under one at .899. He's been the best player in the postseason the last 10 years. He's a beast. So those are the 10 best players in my opinion of the last 10 years of the Major League Baseball postseason. I would love to know what you guys think about it down in the comments below. Who did I leave off? I'm sure some of you are going to say David Ortiz, but look at his numbers. He had some good series, but in total, they weren't great in the 2010s. But if you feel like he deserves to be on there or anybody else, let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to have a conversation, see who you think I missed. Remember to leave a like on the video if you want to see a part two or you want to see more of this kind of content throughout the postseason. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new and you enjoy baseball content. You don't want to miss out what we're making on this channel. While you're watching this, there's a very good chance that I'm going to be streaming on Twitch right now watching the Dodgers Nats game five. So if you want to watch that game along with me in the chat, make sure to head on over to twitch.tv slash draftneckmark. Links in the description. Otherwise, I think I got nothing else to say today. I think that's where we're going to wrap up today's video. You guys know the drill from here on out. YouTube recommends you watch this video right here as well as this is my most recent upload. So click through those if you have not yet seen them. I promise they're good videos. Thank you so much for watching today's video, guys, and I do appreciate you. I'll see you all next time.